Hey there, Joshua Hanlon here at Philly Brick Fest 2018, and we are starting a live stream with a really great bunch of builders that will be coming up here and talk about some of the builds that they have at the show. So we're starting off with this awesome Christmas story build, which you might recognize if you're familiar with the Lego Ideas platform. We've got the builder here, so if you want to introduce sure, yourself and sure. then take us through the build. Yeah, no problem. So my name is Jason Midoff. Uh, my nine-year-old daughter, Jane, and I, uh, in 2016, October, submitted the uh, Lego Christmas Story House through Lego Ideas. Um, it took us about a year of collecting support uh, and kind of went crazy at, at, in December of last year. Could be associated for us. We're at about 9,000 at that point, and then kind of blew it through the, the rest of the way. So we actually hit the 10,000 in, in December, and it's now uh, one of seven projects in Lego Review right now. And we find out sometime between May and September if this is going to become a real set you can get in stores. Okay, very neat. So then before we dive into the set, let's look, take a look at that process a little bit more and kind of what that process is sure. like of getting the votes and everything and how that went. Yeah, so um, there's several different ways you can get votes, but ultimately uh, the votes all have to come through Lego Ideas on the Lego Ideas website. So um, we did a combination of our in-person displays where we had people come and see it and then go back it later on and, and log in uh, we, social media is really the best way to kind of share an idea to get the link on where people can then go to vote uh, and then actually we got some news attention which was very helpful in having a whole bunch of people share it uh, and it just kind of the first Christmas season uh, we we're at close to 4,000 and then going into the the second Christmas season we we're at about seven and kind of shot it the rest of the way through <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure you all saw a big boost when it came Christmas time, yeah, it's, that, it's, yep. obviously, with the, what the project is. You know, we hit this crazy bit of luck, too. Exactly halfway to Christmas on June 25th, we uh, we hit uh, 5,000. So we're halfway, halfway there, <laughs> which was kind of neat. Mm -hmm. So I can create another little buzz. <laughs> were there specific, like, fan forms related to, to the movie or things like that you kind of reached out to for votes, or was it just general kind of sharing it out to the public as best you could? Um, it's a great question. So... The house is actually a museum in Cleveland. Okay. So it was, it's based in Indiana, uh, which is, actually has several different places that have ownership of it. A lot of it was filmed in a studio in Toronto. It's based in Indiana, but the house is in Cleveland. And the department store is also in Cleveland. So uh, that was when I knew I kind of had something. The first week that I had it out there, I wrote a letter to the owner of the uh, Christmas Story House in Cleveland, just told them I had this idea. Uh, they ended up putting it on their Facebook page, and in like between 24 and 48 hours, it had 30,000 hits to the website. So I'm like, okay, I got something. Now, it was a big mistake. I didn't really, the post didn't tell people to vote for it. It's just like, hey, check this out. Oh. So it's kind of like, oh, I missed that big chance. <laughs> That's the learning process yes, there for you. Yes, to exactly. Yeah, so if people are going to do this, I definitely suggest make sure you're clear on. Uh, where people need to go to vote uh, and, and ask them to vote and kind of explain the process. Right. Particularly, I imagine that's important with, with Lego ideas because it's something that your average you know person is not familiar with exactly how that works. So really kind of explaining how, how, how to vote and everything and how the platform works, I'm sure helps. You're right. And actually, I didn't even really know how this worked. So what ended up happening was my, my nine-year-old, I started building some little mocks for her little toys. And, my, and my, my wife was like, you need to submit those ideas to Lego. I'm like, I don't even know if you can do that. Right, so we looked into it. I'm like, oh, there is this whole process, and that's kind of how I came up with the idea for a Christmas story house. I just kind of think, you know, what what's a project that really everybody could rally around a set that I would want, my friends would want, and that's kind of how I came up with the idea. I actually came up with the idea in the hopes of submitting it and ultimately having it become a set. Okay, very neat. So then let's uh, dive into yeah, the yeah, set yeah, here. Yeah, sure. You can kind of take yep. it apart it's and all, show us how it all works. Sure, it's all uh, uh, modular. So the, the top comes off, and I'll, I'll lean this a little bit. I don't know if folks can kind of see inside, but I'll try to stand up a little bit. Um, we've got uh, Ralphie planting the uh, Red Rider sales pitch over here. The Lifeboy soap is in the bathroom. There's actually the hamper. Um, it's got the bedrooms, the phone in the hallway. Uh, the downstairs actually has um, a, a lamp. The leg lamp lights up. Yeah, okay. Right? So the, there's just the simple light brick, and it's it's... I tried to think of all these crazy ways to do it, and, and ultimately it was very simple on how to do it, right? So the, the light brick sits above the leg lamp. When I add the second story on, there's just a little piece that you push, and it will hold it down and light it up in the window, right? <laughs> That's really neat. So, and then we found our our bunny, Ralphie, which is, by the way, like an Easter bunny. 
a pig and Lisa Simpson's legs. Okay. Uh, so you're kind of, you know, getting all the big parts in there, kind of customizing some stuff yep. out. This is literally 100% uh, from other sets. Nothing is custom. So even a, a Fragile piece was from some other cargo set or something. That we found. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah, so one of the last things I did was I added the car. Uh, it's not part of the original submission, but I added an update later on. Uh, I, to be honest, I didn't do it because I didn't know if I could do it with all the curves and the old, you know, kind of a car from the 40s. Uh, but the trunk opens up and there's a tire in the back. <laughs> it's meant to be very playable. My daughter's nine years old. So the whole idea is to have this, you know, everybody can sit in the couches and sleep in the beds and all the doors. Sure, open. you can recreate all the scenes and everything. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's even a little furnace. If you open up this corner door in the kitchen, folks probably won't really be able to see too well. But down there is actually a, a little furnace. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. So what was the process like as you worked on this? Were you looking at kind of screenshots from the movie as it came together? Did you just start from the bottom and work up? Another great question. It's, it's, it was complicated because the interior shots from the movie were actually filmed in a studio. And the actual house is a real house in Cleveland. Right. And there's even some contradictory <laughs> type of um, uh, layouts. So, that's ex so I'll give a good example. So if I take the, the upper story, so looking at Ralphie's room, so I know Christmas morning, he looks outside uh, at, you know, the snow on the trees. Mm -hmm. So he's looking out of the back window. And then there's another point he's writing the theme. He looks out the side window at the car driving up. So I said, okay, I can place that room in this corner. And then there's a point where he runs across the front, past the bathroom to the parents' room. So it's like, okay, I basically know how to lay out you know, with the stairs right there. Right. So a lot of it was exactly like you said, kind of understanding, watching different parts to, to kind of lay it out because it's not a real layout in a house. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what was some of the most difficult parts of the builds for you? You got the slope roof there, yep. you know, the, the snow build up and stuff. Yep. So what, what did you find were some of the difficult techniques to get down? Some of it was kind of organic. The, the snow was kind of organic. Um, the, uh, the stairs are kind of tricky because you have to have exactly the right rise to kind of reach that second story and make sure it it fits without being too uh, too tall or too short. Mm -hmm. uh, that was one of them. Um, the, leg lamp, the leg lamp lighting up, I, I tried a bunch of different ideas and ultimately became very simple on how I did it, but it was a little bit tricky to do initially. So, and then, like I said, I added the car last because I didn't think I could do it, but ultimately I liked the way it turned out. Yeah, and you actually had an interesting experience with this build in Indiana. Tell us about that. Yeah, so the whole thing's been a little bit crazy, but um, the the uh, the movie is set in Hammond, uh, Indiana. They call it Homan in the movie, which is actually a street in Hammond. Uh, so they invited us out. This is the real neat thing. We've been invited to Cleveland and Indiana, a whole bunch of places to come and talk about the project and, and, and to show it. Um, and since that's the home state of the movie, there's this whole display at the Welcome Center of uh, these Macy's window displays from a Christmas story that they have all set up in Hammond. And the governor of uh, Indiana, uh, Governor Eric Holcomb, uh, actually came in to see it and to see the displays. And so uh, there's some great shots of uh, you know, me showing him the set and displaying the leg lamp. Uh, ABC News Chicago was actually there, believe it or not, to cover the set. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> and he walked in. And so I even have like a clip of him endorsing the set on news in Chicago. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so it's been all this stuff coming together then. That's, that's yeah, really awesome. Yeah, it's been really, really crazy. A ton of fun. Um, you know, I, I call this kind of my thank you tour now. I, I don't need the votes anymore, uh, but people have been so great supporting it. I just kind of wanted to come and show people and maybe inspire some people um, to say, I, I'm not a person who's, I'm not, a, I'm not an engineer. I'm not an architect. Uh, this is, you know, one of my first mocks, so I haven't done a million of them, I haven't done in my whole life. Uh, but just with an idea and a little bit of perseverance, uh, this can actually happen. Right, yeah, the, this is accessible to everyone. Kind of, yeah. Everybody can get involved. Yep, exactly. Okay, so what was the process then like with LEGO kind of after you hit or 10,000 votes, did they reach out to you or, and do anything in particular or just kind of now you've, you've got to wait until that the so, next session? So most of it is, is a wait. Um, they sign, you sign an NDA, so you can't really non-disclosure so you can't really talk about things but essentially it's it's i don't know anything i'm, I'm sitting and waiting <laughs> the waiting has been the hardest part right so mm -hmm. um the earliest they could announce this next review period needs to be over so the earliest they can announce is may but well, one one cool piece of information is in january uh, this part's not cool but the, the the previous review cycle none of the projects were approved 
but they did announce at one of the at that time that at least one of the projects in this review cycle uh, has been chosen. Okay, that's so, nice. Yeah, so, so there's at least definitely one. something will be made yep, from. Yep. Okay. So we're keeping our fingers crossed. Because they've done, if I'm not mistaken, past review sessions where they haven't chosen any of the sets, correct? That was the second time that they they've done none, um, but there also have been times when they've done multiple. Okay. So it's not just one either. Yeah. Well, very neat. Yeah, well, I appreciate you bringing that over yeah. here and, and showing it off on the live stream and everything. So. Super happy to do it. <laughs> and I'll just say, if people uh, have questions for me, they want to reach out to me, there is a Facebook page for the for the project. It's a Lego Christmas Story House. I think it's A-L-C-S-H. Uh, people are more than welcome to go out there, um, uh, check out the, the, the Facebook page. And if you got any questions for me, I'm more than happy to answer. Sure. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. So you can get a closer look at it and everything. Yeah. Well, good luck with the review, and I, and I hope it goes well for awesome. you. Me too. So I, I, appreciate I appreciate it. it. Yeah, yep, thank thanks you. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll get that all packed up sure. then. Yep. And bring some more bring some more builders and, and guests over here to, to chat with people. Lots of cool stuff happening here at Philly Breakfast. Behind me, you can see all the crowds and everyone going through in the, the public time. So... Lots of fun. There's actually the uh, the world record for the longest time we spent walking on Lego bricks was actually beaten today. So there's there's been lots of exciting stuff here. It looks like now we have our, our next guest for the live stream. So this is Alan Tran. It's, it's good to have you with us. Hey, Thanks for nice joining me. Uh, so this is, uh, he, ru he runs the, the Brick Fan website. So if you want to tell viewers kind of about that and kind of the, the history of that site and how that came together. Okay, uh, well, the Brick Fan started as a, like a fan project where I just post like my stuff that I like or whatever. And suddenly it became like a, a news related thing and it just blew up from there. <laughs> There you go. So, how long has that been around now? Uh, it's been about five years. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that's that's impressive. So dedication there. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah. To keep it going. Yeah, it takes a while. Yeah. What What would you say is kind of the primary type of content that you generally post over there, or for people? Uh, what, what, what stuff can people expect if they check it if out? If you want to see upcoming sets and stuff, uh, the Brick Fans is probably a good um, thing to go to. I suggest it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. I'm I'm a big fan. Uh, obviously, I've loved following your work over the years. It's it's been really great. So you actually came into the show all the way from California, right? Yeah, San Diego. Okay. Yeah. So what's what's the show like? Kind of what's your experience been? Do you do you make it to uh, several shows each year? Or uh, no, uh, Philly Brick Fest is pretty much my only convention I go to, and like I like it out here. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is a fantastic show. What are some of your favorite events that have happened here so far? Uh, we, we just did the firewalk. The mm -hmm. Guinness record, and that was awesome. Like, <laughs> that, that was crazy. That was crazy. I think you went for something oh, over a half a mile of walking yeah. on two by four red bricks in a big, a big square. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was crazy. Um, I do like some of the live displays out here are awesome as well. Like, you gotta come out and check it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's that's very neat. So, any plans for the future with Brick Band stuff that you're kind of got coming down the pipeline? Um, no, I'm just continuing doing what I'm doing, and I appreciate it. I uh, appreciate everyone who comes out and reads it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, thank you very much on that. Yeah, and this is an interesting show because there's uh, there's a big like sort of online Lego community presence here with blogs, and YouTubers, especially yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, which I think is very interesting. It's unusual to have to have like that many uh, kind of online fan communities yeah, in one be, place. Yeah, easy powers back there. Like mm -hmm. they're great for buying cool stuff for you guys who want to look into that. So you get to get to meet a lot of those types of people here yeah, then at yeah. the show. Yeah, Kevin Hinkle's here. <laughs> He's awesome. <laughs> that's right, exactly. So, so you can meet all sorts of really cool builders here. And that's something unique that I think uh, a Philly, Philly really draws out here. So that's were you at the uh, opening ceremonies uh, the other night? Yeah, yeah. The, and that was actually at the Discovery Center, Yeah, at the right? Discovery Center. It was, it was pretty cool. They just grouped everyone in the theater and just did their thing <laughs> there you go i wasn't able to make it here for that but that's that's a very unique experience yeah, yeah. i don't think i've ever heard of a lego show doing that yeah and we just took over the the park like pretty much to ourselves we'll close it off to us and, yeah mm -hmm. fun. yeah really great well thank you alan i appreciate you right. stopping by right. thank, you, thank you very much having. yeah lots of great live live streamers coming on here so See who else? See who else we have coming on in the in the future here. You're, we've got a, we've got a new producer over here. You can't see him as. Well. <laughs> you can't see him, but we have a, a new producer over here. Classic, classic.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here and tell us about what you got going on. Yeah, I'm iceberg Mel. Um, <laughs> host show, and in fact, my one-on-one interview show is kind of inspired by you guys. Oh, thank you. That's awesome. Glad we were able to, to give you the inspiration for that. So, do you do that at conventions or online? type of thing? That's online type okay. of thing. And, and you, you know, as I know, you know, you ask the questions that, you know, the uh, brick doesn't tell. So, you know, <laughs> exactly. There's all that interesting behind the scenes type of stuff yep. there going on there. Yeah, so did absolutely. you bring builds to the show as well? Do you have yes. stuff here? Yes, I did. Okay. I, did, I, did. I did a Wayne Enterprise build. I did a Mandarin City and I also did my, my brick bank. So, you know, very minimal, but, you know, something, something to show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was talking with Alan just a little bit ago. It's really cool. This show brings out so many YouTubers uh, kind of at, at the show, and you get a lot, a lot of on the online community here. So, have you had a chance to to meet some of the people online in person now? Yes, yes. I mean, um, a, a year ago, I was just a spectator, you know, and I was starstruck because I've you know been on YouTube following people, mm -hmm. and I'm still starstruck <laughs> today, you know, because I actually you know get to meet these guys, and I'm in the same arena with these guys. So they like, you know, calm down. They tell me, calm down, calm down. It's, it's all right. You're one of us. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in, in my mind, you know, these guys, you know, it's all inspiration, like even being here with you. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, everybody's just making content and everything, and it's a really creative, uh, inspirational process, which is what's so great about coming to these shows. So. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, just to be able to mind with those guys, we went bowling last oh, night. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so what was that event like? Tell us about that. That's like, you know, I was able to do that last year. I wasn't able to do it this year. No, I, I, I tried to get out of it. I'm not a great bowler. <laughs> you know, I'm not, you know, but I got sucked into it. And uh, so you got a team of five, and they're, they're bowling, and then you got to build, too. So you gotta, you're building, you're going through 10 frames, and you're trying to hurry up. And they, they picked the technic set. That's like the worst. <laughs> That's not set. an easy thing no. to do when you're rushing. <laughs> And you're rushing through it, and then with my team, we failed, you know, because we had to uh, take a part, a, a piece of it, because we were we were lost in the sauce, man. We were, we were way behind, you know. Uh, and, and actually, yeah, 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 classic one, classic. Oh, one. of yeah. course, that's why. <laughs> but he, he had a professional builder. That's what he, he, he we should get. We should get you on builder. camera real quick. You should, you should come in here. We'll, we'll we'll get you on camera so people can see. There you go. Come on, come on in. Oh, got the mic yeah, he yes. had a professional <laughs> builder, so he was kind of cheap. Oh, okay. Who was that? Uh, it was a young kid who was here. So uh, he was in a wheelchair, so he couldn't bowl, but he wanted to participate. So I'm like, oh, I'm bowling. You're building. <laughs> <laughs> he smoked everybody. Yeah, <laughs> he, he, did. he did. He did. We were, he was almost done. I said, like, hold the pin. It was, we had, uh, what, three frames to go? And he was done. I said, like, just yeah. hold the pin. Just hold it. So we had to finish. Yeah, I'm sitting there talking to me, just holding the pen, and then when they done, oh, we done with the pen, and we the pen. It was great because the kid got to take everything home, and that's what this is all about. You know, I know, you know? it's all, all about me getting a high score. Yeah, that too. Did you get your 20 bucks? No, nah, but well, the kid got a set. Win, did you? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm better as a producer. Okay, go back, go back behind the camera. There we go. Classic, classic first producer ever. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He's a good guy because, you know, and, and we're all here because of the kids and the brick mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And and, and it's it's just stuff you pass down to, to the kids. So mm -hmm. for him to do that for that kid because the kid was disability, you know, he had disability. It was, it, you know, it right. Right, got that, everybody involved. Yeah. So everybody could do something. That, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that kid will remember that ongoing. So. so yeah. have you made it to any other shows besides this one here at Philly or? Do you have make it to other shows that you try to try to meet people at? Yeah, I, I did the one. I recently did the one in Baltimore, and then I did the one in uh, Virginia. Um, okay. Down in Chantilly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah there you go, Brick yeah. Fair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, how, what talk about some of the, how those shows compare, and some some of the things that like this show has, and everything, and, and how, how how some of those experiences compare for you? What I, what I do notice is that uh, you know this this region is different from the one in Virginia's region, and you see some of the different builds and stuff like that. So you you know it's different arts. Like mm -hmm. different different styles and everything like that. Like the one in Virginia was was a big one like this, but you know, um, and that's where I met BX Bricks at. And so uh, it was it was it, the competition was stiff <laughs> in, in Virginia. It was yeah. it was stiff in Virginia. It was it was it was, it was real it was real tough. Um, and so uh, I know notice here that it's 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 tough, but it's, it's not on that on that scale level yet. Thank God that no more bricks isn't here because he, he would be mastering everybody. But <laughs> yeah, no, there's there's some talented builders there. But you bring up an interesting point about how different shows kind of bring out different styles of builds. Like I think a brick fair, there's a, always a massive like military presence there yeah. with all of the military builds that you you don't get nearly as much of that at other shows. So oh, yeah, they absolutely. kind of have the different types of builds. You know, here we've got some massive Minecraft layout here. Right, so right. that's yeah. stuff like that kind of comes out of different shows. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. And in the pop culture here. 
is a little bit toned down, whereas in Virginia, uh, it was it was everywhere. Star Wars, everything, everything Star Wars. And it's like, oh, and it kind of rubbed off on me because I'm doing the uh, the UCS go uh, ghost. So you know, I'm trying to get that built up. But uh, I mean, so Star Wars, everything. Mm -hmm. What other builds have you caught your eye here as far as things that kind of inspired you or things that you you can learn to see that here? Again, I'm 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 uh, starstruck. So. Agents of Mock has this awesome build, uh, Asgard. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's a miniature build, but it's so detailed that you, you can sit there and watch that thing for a whole hour and not get bored. <laughs> I don't know how Troy does it, but, <laughs> but he, he knows it's how to catch it. has got some moving parts in it and everything then? No, I don't think they're or just, moving okay, parts. Okay, just, just kind of so much detail. So much detail yeah. on top of it, and he's using a variety of bricks, and it, it's just awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and you got that. Of course, you got Bricksmith and his, his Rainbow City. You know, and, and some others as well out there. So, yeah, yeah. also all sorts of cool stuff. Well, so yeah. people who want to check out your content, maybe your builds or the other interviews you've done, where can they find that online? Oh, Iceberg Bricks on Instagram and Iceberg Bricks on YouTube. Uh, one on one interviews, and you no, get to know the artist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to warn you. You better turn this into a good interview, or you're gonna end up in the freeze zone. Yeah. <laughs> sure, no, we don't want to end up in the freeze zone. I don't want to put you in the freeze zone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to put it in the free zone. Free zone's not personal. It's just <laughs> yeah, somehow I figured that out. Our producer is like, not the bitter. <laughs> well, good stuff. Well, I appreciate Thank you, you having me on. I appreciate yeah, definitely. I, yeah. I appreciate it. So, yeah, enjoy the rest of the show here. All right. Come on down, y'all. Come go. on down. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> yeah, once again, all sorts of, of really cool stuff happening here at Philly Brick Fest. So, we're trying to bring you as much coverage as we can here at the show. I know we've got John, our editor, videographer, and normal producer with Classic Classic Bricks, isn't it? He's out tracking down some people to, to join me here at the show, but lots lots of neat stuff happening. The, the Guinness World Record was was really cool to watch. Uh, that was Brainy Bricks. He walked around, did over a half a mile on the on the live stream on or on the on the bricks there, and so he was able to, to go for quite a while. I think he quite a bit of pain at the end, but it was it was fun to watch as a spectator. I would never want to do that myself, but it, it was very entertaining to watch as a spectator. And so that's some of the, the awesome stuff. They, they have uh, some of the non-Lego stuff they have here. They have like the Ecto-1 from Ghostbusters and some of that type of content is here as well. Uh, there's kind of the room behind me is, is where the, the mocks are focused. And then there's kind of divider. And then the other half of the, the convention hall is all of the more public aimed activities. So you've got like free build areas, you've got all the vendors there, lots of lots of really great vendors, uh, Citizen Brick, all sorts of, of really cool vendors that sell a lot of awesome custom pieces and stuff like that. So all, all sorts of fun stuff to do do around here. If, if you're in the Philly area, I would definitely encourage you to, to come down and, and check it out here. Uh, check out Philly Brick Fest. It's not too far away and it's real easy to get to. And it's it's a fantastic show to come out and see some get some inspiration on some of these, these great builds here like we had the, the Christmas house so lots lots of neat stuff you can check out Look, this place amazing. that's right we got some, some viewers behind us here like, confirming how, how amazing it is <laughs> as they walk by and check out everything with the public over here you even got some some bigger models like Legoland style models they've got uh, basketball players and uh, Dark Vader so Big giant life-size type builds you'd see at like a Legoland park. So all of that stuff is is very cool. See who else we have back here and see see who we can get to join us. Might be a couple minutes before we get someone else up on stage, but we'll do our best to, to have someone here. <laughs> What is, oh, we, we have a hat. Oh, that's right. The <laughs> it's the fake Lego. I, I did have one of these last year, didn't I? Yeah, but it's so crazy. Did anybody give you a hard time about that? No one would ever give me a hard time about a beautiful hat like this. I know. <laughs> so how about some, I got five gallons of gasoline in a mat. Good to go? You're, you're a big fan of these hats, aren't you? Oh. Well, where, where did you pick up this beautiful hat from? The trash can. The trash can. Where it belongs. I think there are some vendors selling these here, actually. Why are, you, why are you talking to this guy? Hey, hey come in, come in, come in, baby. So we're che we're checking out the the, the uh, third party Lego hat. I think that's the way third, to put it. Third, third party. Third, third party China. Yeah, whatever. So let's have uh, John. Okay, John. John. John producer John. Uh, 
when, when we don't have classic plastic bricks here, we'll give you an update on what's going on here. Okay, the, the, the EPs are playing. <laughs> we have a couple people coming over right now. Okay, very cool. So we'll, we'll have some new, new guests for you here very soon. Dude, do we have anyone in the chat? Anyone watching? There were, there were a few people in the chat. Okay, Let's shout out to everyone out. in the chat. Uh, we we always love seeing that. Well, I, I'm not able to, to see it here. We'll see if John can pull it up. And that video looks great, actually. And if you have any questions in the chat, you know, give us as we can answer them about the show or anything here. What's going on? Why are we, why are we live streaming a Lego convention? You know, everything goes. Uh, here's a question. Is Jane there i'm not that i'm aware of but you know maybe he could be undercover you never know with jane so uh he's a, he's a sneaky guy he could be walking around the show what else do we have here is there a pittsburgh brick fair um i don't know if there is a, a, a brick fest show in pittsburgh or not that's a good question i would google that and you can check it out it looks like we have yeah Another builder here, so it's yeah. great to have you join us. Yeah. So uh, if you watched our coverage from this same show last year, you might have seen some of his creations and some of what he brought to the show. So he's got some new awesome stuff you want to share with us. So yeah. you want to introduce yourself, tell people about you if they didn't see last year's stuff, and then tell us about the builds. I'm sorry. So I'm Rod Damiano. I created a uh, neoplastic theme that I like to call Nova Team. I, I always say it's like my take on that. You know, you got the guys like Peter Reed and Tim Goddard who pioneered it, wrote the book literally on it. So I just had to make my own spin on it. Um, and my my shtick really is the photography of it um, is really what I like to do is the, is the, is the photograph, it tells stories, and it had built it associated with all that. So that's mm -hmm. that's kind of my thing. And everything's usually done in new classic space. I did change it up a little bit this year because I'm a kid of the 80s and the 90s. So I had Mtron and Blacktron growing up and always okay. wanted classic space. So I did classic space originally to make up for my childhood. <laughs> but I decided to start to sneak in a little bit of those other themes. So what I got is a Blacktron 2-ish build that I did, and then I just figured I'd bring another classic space thing. Sure, yeah, fun. let's take take us through these then. So we'll do the Blacktron one first. So um, it's kind of more or less Blacktron 2. Can we get this space down? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's that's that. All right, cool. Yep. Um, yeah, it's more or less Blacktron 2-ish. And I say ish because I never liked the white of Black Tron 2. It just it didn't feel bad guy enough to me. <laughs> White, um, white's a good guy color. You can't have exactly, that. Exactly, exactly. I mean, if Cowboys and Indians are told us anything, <laughs> right. right? It's like, you know, that's how it goes. So anyway, so I, I kept the trans neon green accents for uh, for this, but I swapped out the white for dark blue gray. Okay. Um, there is a couple minifigures that Legos put out in the 2000s, you know, which is kind of like, you could call it, Blacktron 3, there's something from Space Police, there's a bad guy, right. and there was a collectible minifigure. So I and they were using this color palette. So I decided that all right, that minifigure is gonna spark the way I want to do black, you know, black tron mm -hmm. now. So I went with something very aggressive, very bad guy looking, <laughs> um, and unapologetically copying Star Wars. There all right. You um, you know, when I was come up with this idea, last shot I had just come out, so we had um Kyle Ren's Tile Silencer, I think, has a real forward wings, except for their con with convex and mine are more concave so they have more of a they swoop in like that so it's almost got a little bit of an explain look a little bit right too, well, yeah and it's in its profile but i just wanted something ridiculously aggressive looking um one of the things i, I really wanted to do was having a forward swinging cockpit so here's at the old school cockpit done in a little bit of a newer a newer way right not the traditional like up, upward like yeah. plastic space type of thing you talked about sure exactly exactly and uh, it's just you know it's full of blasters and the tips <laughs> Big overstated engines, um, and and let's see, I can show that, and a bunch of uh, just missile launchers. Which one popped off? We'll fix that real quick. Mm -hmm. And I always like to put landing gears on my ships. So, right, I mean that's realistic. They gotta land somehow. There you go. <laughs> exactly, and, I, and and for the build's sake, this joint is wings. Are, they're, they're a little weak, so I'm okay. a little afraid to just let it rest on the wings <laughs> anyway. So I kind of had a need for that. So that's pretty much Talk it about the them. techniques here. With like you said, you have kind of the angled wings yeah. almost there. How how did you achieve that? What pieces did you use there? That's a really good question because I kind of got a little lucky. <laughs> <laughs> so I had the idea of doing the wings, so I started to build them this way. And I like to do the brick built wings, like a lot of the neo classic mm -hmm. guys like to do, and not do a uh, plate base. Um, so you get all, awesome details on it. So when I did that, I just ended up finding a um a Technic um connector. That was a, I think it's a forty five degree angle. It just just works because my wing is built at a 90 and then flipping it just up I think it had a 45 degrees upward and now all it's using is some Technic bricks on the inside of it okay. to connect 
and it's uh it, it keeps it together and it's surprisingly stable i mean this ford wings a little heavy but um otherwise it's not so bad which is really cool when i want to take it to the show wing pops right off perfect so it's like a modular type of design yeah, there exactly yeah. which is kind of cool because it could change the wings out to something else and make another variant on this mm -hmm. by just doing that and just keeping the fuselage sticking. so i may try that one day we'll see you can tell you've been to shows before when you design stuff like that. You, you learn quickly that that's how you have to put it together. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and my, my, my terrain build, which is a really basic and pedestrian build, fell apart completely this year because I got a little too big, couldn't fit in boxes. They're mostly base plates, which all want to bow and bend. But the ships, they all survive really well. Okay. So they travel well. <laughs> and I just ended up building, like, just last week, an overly complicated stand for it, which I didn't even have the right colors for it because I realized I needed to display this thing a little cooler at the show than I do on my desk at home. Right. So, you know, just to see if I can get that to look right. There you there go. There you go. Perfect. So, give it a little angled bank. Oh, that's look. great. Yeah. And then I needed. I did this, and I gave I gave Latcher on something so cool. It's like, well, I need to do another classic ship to kind of go up against. So this ship, oh, by the way, this is called the Ravager. I decided to give it a very Black okay, John yes. name. <laughs> um, this is called the Paladin. Um, named that after my days way back when I used to play World of Warcraft. I figured I, <laughs> I would uh, do a little honor to that. Mm -hmm. um, this ship actually started light. So I, I didn't say this this year, but I do a lot of my builds starting digitally. So I use LBD, or more recently, I've been using Studio IO from Bricklink. Which, by the way, if any, nobody's tried it, give it a shot. It's actually pretty cool. Yeah, I've never tried that out. So I guess if you want to talk a little bit more about that since you brought that yeah. up and kind of how, how what your experience sure. is like with that and how that works. Yeah, absolutely. So and this is a great model to explain that okay. one. So I started to do this one in um, Studio I.O. And I think literally from beginning to end, stem to stern was done with Studio I.O. Other ones I started with LED and, and moved over. Um, it's It has a bit of a pro-ish feel to it. My, my day job's in video production, so I'm very used to Dex programs and stuff like that. Sure. And there's something about it that feels a little more pro to me. Maybe it's just the darker interface and that's <laughs> yeah, it. I don't really know. <laughs> but it just it feels better. Um, and they have a great part selection. They don't have an infinite part selection, but it's really great. Um, and it's easy to work with it and, and play around. And the thing why I build digitally is I have every single part known to me and or <laughs> real close to right. it. I don't have that at home. Mm -hmm. I can kind of build to my imagination, do whatever I want to do. And then figure out how to pay for it later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least you have the design out there then. And exactly. then, then you figure out how you're going to get the pieces. Exactly. I mean, at home on my laptop right now, I've always designed. I just haven't gotten around the building, you know, or haven't desired, I didn't have a desire to do it. This is one I meddled, meddled with for a while to get right. I started it out as a Space Police One ship that I was originally going to do. So it was blue and black and trans red, and it wasn't feeling right to me. And what's really cool, I selected all the black. I changed the blue gray. I changed, the, took the blue, turned it, or rather the black, and turned it to blue. Changed the trans red to, to yellow, that and I had to wild. change out a few things because parts don't come in certain colors. But I, like within an hour, I turned this into neoclassic space, and it just felt better to me. Okay, yeah. So that's and that's the beauty of that program. Then you can you can do all that that easily. Yeah, and it being that it's made by Bricklink, they make it really easy to purchase through Bricklink. <laughs> Obviously, that's the <laughs> that's the buying <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> Um, and honestly, that's actually a benefit as far as I'm concerned, because I'm always making one at lists and then trying to figure out what I need to buy. It makes it super easy for that. So mm -hmm. that's what I do. So I'll talk about the ship a sure. little bit. So um, my inspiration was some artwork from like a Star Wars fan artwork thing. It was a, a made up ship. I wish I knew the artist. I don't remember it. I got some inspiration from that. That kind of was my, my, my jump into like, oh, I like this. It kind of had this. This kind of open mouth. I'm calling it the mouth. It works. It works. Sure. You say it works. Good. <laughs> um, you know, so kind of open mouth thing where you can put blasters and sensor equipment and stuff like that. And it's it's got this really bulky, chunky design. It weighs a ton. Here, I'll hand it to you. You can how much it weighs for just a little shit. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's got some heft to it. Think <laughs> yeah. You really built that out. Yeah, I did. I know. I should have put a little more hollow. But you know, sometimes you're doing this, you don't know how things are going to work. So you just stick bricks and things and you figure it out later. Um, I like the slightly angled um, winglet engine outlet kind of the things that it has there. I like that it didn't have traditional wings. It just was something a little different that I wanted to go with. Um, cockpit, it, cockpit position is a little bit more, um, a little more traditional, mm -hmm. but um, I do like that I had a tandem seating. I was kind of really stuck on needing to, needing to make two guys sit side by side. Right, you know, you don't see that a lot with the, the two, the two pilot kind of cockpit thing. Yeah, exactly. Because many figures are oddly shaped. Right, exactly. right? And they get their elbows are hitting each other and they're getting in the way. 
So I just offset thing with uh, offset the seats with jumpers and stuff to kind of get it to fit right. Okay. So I I got lucky and it, and it kind of worked. I've um, got some blasters on the side here, some on the side. You got to have ample blasters, you know. For sure. So, you know, you got to get those black trunk guys, right? Um, like any good classic space vessel, it has a hatch on the back. It doesn't store anything right now, but it can if it needs to. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I feel like they all need it. Right, like right? a storage area type of thing. Exactly, sure, yeah. Exactly. I mean, I think it's that and modularity, which none of my stuff has. It does make classic space work. Um, it's a little hard to get. There you go. Cool. Underside is pretty detailed up with some stuff. Did a little repeating pattern with some uh, cheese wedges, just for cheese slopes, excuse me. Um, you know, to make, make that kind of look a little different. Some uh, weapons and, of course, landing gears. So I had to have them. And I was actually proud of these little ones because there's no anti studs at all, even on the landing gears. So, yeah, that's great. Yeah, so I mean, there's using uh, ratchet joints, nothing, nothing special, but it, it works and it holds it up pretty well, pretty stable. Perfect. So, yeah. <laughs> Well, good stuff. So then I also wanted to bring up, so I we talked about this last year, but for people who didn't see that, you work with blocks as well. You mentioned yeah. a little bit, you do the photography. Yeah. So talk about kind of how that works and, and how that comes into play with, with the physical builds that you do. Yeah, sure. So um, I'm a freelance photographer for Blast Magazine. Pretty much is on the payroll, but they hire me occasionally to do some photography. I work with the U.S. editor, Daniel Kinsansky, on a lot of different projects. We Earlier in 2017 and, and stuff, he was doing these really big, awesome, elaborate builds. And then... He would just schlep them to my studio, and I'd have the honor of spending an entire weekend, entire weekend, <laughs> while photographing these things. And we had a blast. We, he did an amazing Ninjago City that was meant to model the Ninjago City from the movie, and then I would photograph that. And so I get to do some covers and things like that. They give me some of the movie-ish themes because my, with my Nova Team series, I do I go with a very cinematic kind of style, okay. and that dovetails well into cinematic themes for Lego builds that need to be shown in the magazine. So I do that. And something new I just started literally a couple issues ago. I'm doing a photography um, column as okay. well. So, you know, it's a couple pages of the magazine. And I kind of talk about some of my tricks and tips about how I do Lego photography. This is the end all be all of Lego photography <laughs> now. But I just, things I find helpful. People go, oh, you know, people say the line on me. I mean, say, the, say the line to me. Um, how did you do that? What are you using for this and that? And so it's my chance to kind of answer that. Instead of me showing behind the scenes photos online, which... I'm a little weird. I like my social media to be all complete at work. Right, right. So, well, the, the finished product looks good. So, exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. And photography is such a big part of the community that I'm sure that's helpful to people because obviously you, you make a really cool creation, but you want to make it look well online as well. You want to make, make it look cool. So, you know, you got to have to take good photographs to do that. Absolutely. That's really what I, my, my first article talks about how I hate seeing beautiful builds. You know, someone took so much care and love and parts and money and time <laughs> and all that into it. And here he is on my floor of my kitchen with crumbs on it or something, you know what I mean? Or, or on their building desk where I see nothing but a wall of trays of Lego. Right. It's like it, it takes away from it. And even something as simple as getting a piece of um, poster board, stick it in a corner and place your ship or whatever there and take a photo of your cell phone. Guess what? You're going to have a much better shot than... All you push it for. There you go. Okay, so yeah, so. so keep an eye out if you get Blocks magazine. I definitely encourage you to check it out. We've done a lot of work with Blocks over the over the years here, and it's really really great magazine. So uh, definitely check that out. And you can see some more of Rob's work there. So I appreciate you joining thank me you here. Very much. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, take so, it easy. Yeah, appreciate the rest it. Of the show. Definitely. We'll see you see you later. So I think we've got the next builder lined up here, and he's got some really awesome builds that he's bringing us. You might recognize him from our coverage of the show last year. And some of the stuff he has here. While he gets set up, I'm going to take a look at the the comments here and see see what we have. Uh, see if, if there are any questions here. Thanks to every, everyone joining us in the, the chat and commenting. Shout out to Brett Hooper in the chat. Lots lots of good stuff here. So yeah, once again, if you have any questions, feel free to, to put them in the chat as, as we talk and everything, and we'll, we'll make sure to, to try to occasionally look at those and then do our best to, to answer those questions. Yeah, there's a, there's a comment that just says Minecraft, which reminds me there's an awesome Minecraft layout here, which is super cool. It's actually an expansion of a build we covered last year, so... Lot, lots of fun stuff on display.
looks like we've got the the builder all set up here so if yeah. you want to you can feel free to yeah move in here make sure you get in the shot okay. and uh if you want to introduce yourself tell people about, about your your history with lego and kind of what you've got here definitely definitely well uh, uh i'm the fan designer behind lego ideas doctor who uh not on sale anymore but it was a, a great experience uh meeting the fans doing the signing uh having an official lego set sold in stores uh dream come true and uh you know, obviously, such a good experience. Uh, you want to do it again, right? And that was such an impressive, <laughs> impressive build. It came out, came out really great. So yeah, you had that one made into a set and everything. Now, is that still for sale or no? Is that uh, uh, only by scalpers on? EBay. Okay, okay, secondary maybe, market. <laughs> maybe Amazon too. Maybe a few trickling uh, down. Right. Um, but um, I don't know if they're going to be doing more um, Doctor Who sets. Um, you know, uh, that's something Lego do internally. Um, I did do another design. But, uh, Lego ideas changed the rules, so you couldn't submit more Doctor Who ideas. Uh, so that, that this is uh, uh, the only one you'll see as an ideas set, unless okay. they change the rules. But um, as I mentioned, um, I thought to myself, well, what do I want to do next? And I thought, well, what would translate into Lego? What would be colourful and fun and, uh, you know, and uh, be a good idea and popular and maybe nostalgic? And I looked at my own childhood again, and I thought I'd combine my interest, like I did with Doctor Who, interested in lego and doctor who I, I was interested in uh the flintstones uh watching it as a kid and i've got the car here which um it can uh, tip on a ball joint side to side and front to back playability um, in there playability so it looks dynamic on the road uh, and also uh i've got the ribs as a model uh i should have brought it with me but i haven't but uh, in the show, it like tips because of the weight of the ribs and in the intro sequence. Okay. Uh, so it can tip side to side. And additionally, uh, when placed next to the house, uh, it can be the driveway like that. So, Perfect. So it's kind of comes together in modular type pieces there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, as you can see here, the roof kind of occludes the view to the inside. So you're like, oh, I can't see too well. So I just have it where it uh, slides out uh, with a little bit of force. Uh, just a small amount and then you can see the inside and it's got like a bird music player on a, a turnable so when it's printed on because you can't really see it while rotating it's all the same um you, you know you can rotate that it's like a record player there <laughs> <laughs> bird power record player <laughs> so uh because one thing with the flintstones they have uh, their technology is based on uh creatures doing the work like a uh, bird music uh you know music player um a lawnmower that's a, a little dinosaur eating the grass, you know, chomping away at it. Um, so yeah, I try to do something that is fun and colourful. And uh, I know a lot of people use the palm tree element that hasn't been in production for like a decade. So I eventually uh, found this element, which is a dinosaur tail. So that dinosaur thing, so it kind of yeah, it kind of uh, ties in nicely. Ties in, yeah, it's a good uh, good fit. But it's wider at the base and tapered and curved and look kind of fun and more cartoonish um so yeah so that, that's good but um since i originally put it up on lego ideas uh now that i'm approaching 10,000 votes i'm like 10,600 um i thought i'd take another pass at it and i made some minor changes not reflected in here but in the digital model uh the roof is on hinge bricks hinge plates so you can raise it up there a bit but what i added was a technique beam from here to here so you can't lift it up and then with this piece here you can't budge it that way okay and then there was another piece here as well so you can't so it kind of locks it in place keeps it more stable for, for the, the display piece there definitely definitely because i know when lego comes to review it they're going to be like we can't have the roof go like that <laughs> you know one if someone tried to pick it up it'll just come off the roof so i knew like you know they wouldn't let that slide right. you know you gotta redesign that I imagine that stuff like that you probably learned going through the Doctor Who process and stuff you were able to incorporate you learned from, from going through that whole process into this build. Oh, definitely, definitely. It's a great process. Um, you know, they, they have to think about every aspect of it, um, you know, safety and can their kid build it properly or like or like with the, um, the TARDIS, the, um, the inside, this console, you know, you don't want uh, some kid like um, injuring themselves on it or um, so they've got to uh, make it safe and... Um, with the TARDIS, it kind of has like a locking mechanism uh, that keeps the doors closed. Uh, 
outside when the, the roof is on so it doesn't just flop open mm -hmm. so i try to consider everything like what would i want as a fan um you know some people propose these like ten thousand part models which you know they'd never do at that size so i tried to do something that's realistic that the fans would like they'd be willing to pay that amount for something that's fun and colorful even though it's like a great building um, I want to still maybe try and incorporate a bit more color like uh, the, sand, the sand blue. That's not too garish or bright or saturated, mm -hmm. but adds a bit of uh, extra color to it. Something to the gray of the rest the of the gray build. Gray blob, you know, <laughs> like, you know, Star Wars set. No offense. I like Star Wars. All the, all the Star Wars fans are upset now, but that's okay. <laughs> but no. yeah, so, so you mentioned you're just like three, four hundred votes away from the 10,000 then. So, so yeah. definitely anybody watching this, you know, share the project out there. Go to Lego Ideas. What, what's the best way to find the project? Well, uh, if you go, you can either search by typing Flintstone, and uh, mine will come up along with some others, and mine will be the one that's got nearly 10,000. Or you can um, uh, filter by most supported, and mine's currently the second most supported. Right, yeah. uh, so it's currently got 9,600 odd votes. Uh, the final push uh, to get to 10,000, it could be your boat that gets the 10,000 and, and makes it possible. So, mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> yes, there you go for sure. <laughs> Thank maybe, you. maybe over the weekend here as the show goes on, you'll, you'll, you'll hit the 10,000 and real close uh, to it. I so. have a little party before I go back home. <laughs> yeah, definitely. There you go. Yeah. Like the Doctor Who project turned out great. So, this this would be an awesome idea as well. So, what else do you have for us here? Do you have some other projects in the works? Uh, yeah, I did a Thunderbird one. Okay. Uh, well, I'm a fan of the original. I, I thought I'd try the new series, maybe that's more popular and relevant with kids. And the shape was easier to translate, being a bit more square, uh, you know, less rounded. Uh, so this is Thunderbird 2 with three vehicles that all fit inside. It's got some micro figs on the side, you can take the cockpit off. Uh, this is the render, but uh, some of them are the smaller ones I built uh, physically. But it always helps to build physically because digital allows you to do things that you could never do in real life. Right. Like LDD allows you to place it. Uh, the Erling brick, the headlight brick next to, with its side still facing another brick. In reality, it creeps fractionally too far, and you can never do that. But LDD is like short. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is a danger of like the digital building. You got to make sure it translates into an actual physical build that Lego would be able to make a set out of. Exactly. Yeah, like making it pretty is one thing, but making it pretty and be stable, and you can play with it, and it just won't fall apart by looking at it. Um, so. Um, yeah, definitely. There's uh, lots of things they have to consider, and I try to be realistic. Like, um, you know, what, with this, that would say bedrock on it. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome to bedrock, or whatever. Uh, I make sure that the printing, you know, is is done so it doesn't like awkwardly have a gap where the, the tiles end and one begins. Right. So it's just like um, got to create the best um, looking effects. So uh, yeah, I try to because um, obviously they do it the way they do it for a reason. Uh, they've learned over uh, many decades like what's the best way to approach things or you know um so it's definitely stuff to learn from and you, you build official lego sets and you realize maybe why they did what they did the way that they did and uh, incorporate that into your build and uh but uh yeah it's a great experience i'm trying again and it's fun i'm glad to be here and on the show and I watch the show. So sure, well, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. And so then you obviously you mentioned experience there. You know, you had the Doctor Who project. This is about the ten thousand votes. So you've you've had quite a bit of experience with ideas and kind of getting people to vote for projects. So what kind of advice would you pass on to maybe other people looking to achieve that and get the votes on ideas? And what, what advice could you give them? Okay. So you want something impressive to get the votes, but at the same time, I think you should also be realistic. So it passes review like a big ten thousand part epic looking set. All other change the rules for a max of three thousand now, uh, but um, so be realistic. Um, don't propose something that's a very repetitive build. You know, have a, a good build, something that's a good build experience and interesting, uh, something that's fun. Uh, like for example, also like for example, the wheels on this. Now, I could have done them more, more jagged to be rock-like. You know, give it more character. It mm -hmm. might look a bit nicer. But then you couldn't take it off and just roll it right. and play with it. Mm -hmm. Like the Tron set, the most recent one, the fan idea, I think the initial submission, the wheels didn't rotate. Now the new one can because they know that kids, if they have it, they're going to want to roll their arm. So that, that's something I considered when I did it. Um, so yeah, be realistic, uh, present it nicely, different angles, 
and I have play features and this for promotion obviously you've got all the social media in this case uh, you know uh, Facebook Flickr um, there's lots of Facebook sites for fans of the Flintstones or retro cartoons obviously uh, Lego fan websites and um, fans of Lego who have uh, uh, YouTube channels like yourself. <laughs> uh, find find your local Lego YouTuber. <laughs> or, or, or go to Lego events like right. this one and do what I'm doing now. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. You, uh, you come up and talk to it and uh, just uh, show off and talk your idea, uh, show the passion behind it, the ideas, and uh, you know the concept. So definitely, it iterate a lot. Um, it's fine to build digitally, but I find that. It, once you get high in the boat and it looks like it could get the 10,000, I'd probably just check to see if it's actually possible in real Lego. Because if, 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 it, if it isn't for you, it might not be for them. There might be a core aspect that defines the set as what it is that can't be replicated in a way that's legal or you know correct or that will pass review. So try and think of something that's popular, something that's fun, has broad appeal, not just in your own experience in your own life, but like also abroad maybe because if it's just limited to the country you're born in you know that might be a ding against it right yeah you kind of um, cross those boundaries geographic whatever it might be to try to reach as many possible people as possible yeah definitely definitely so choose an idea that's popular or uh, obviously yeah you can uh, come up with your own idea like the old fishing store which mm -hmm. is uh, uh you know the, the, the person's original idea which is great so obviously their ideas want more of that uh, you know, because um, there'll come a point where all these IPs uh, will have been done. All the main ones, like Doctor Who, Flintstones, uh, Big Bang, um, you know, Tron, whatever. And there'll come a time where the main ones are done, and then the lesser ones may not be quite popular enough to warrant a set. Uh, and then the, what they'll have less is original ideas. But then that's hard to get in 10,000 votes because it didn't have a big fan base. Right, yeah, that's so, the struggle. Um, but there have been some great, you think of like oh, the birds yeah. and stuff like that that, that have, have gotten through that were those original ideas. And so, yeah, if you can get the, the word out there, then it's, it's some great projects. Definitely. The birds was a great project, the exosuit, mm -hmm. uh, kind of the maze. Right, yeah. Yeah, the, um, uh, what's the word? The uh, chicken in a bottle. Oh, right. Just came <laughs> out with Jake. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we just, just had a chance to interview him at the Bricks Cascade and talk about his his inspiration for that design and everything so yeah projects like that are great yeah so definitely try to think of something original um which i might make it at some point after this um but i just need to take a break for now <laughs> sure <and>, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you stay busy here so yeah once again uh everyone watching you know go out and vote just a few hundred votes away on the flintstones project it'd be awesome to get that in well you said there's a review period is it the end of the month uh, the review period i think is may the first uh so if it takes longer for the, my set to get the ten thousand votes then it'll be uh, it'll be in the next review period four months later. Um, you know, ideally, since obviously I'm so close, it's gonna it'll be anyone's goal to try and reach that. You mm -hmm. know, that, you know that uh, maybe first uh, period. But um, I've still got mathematically, you know, like with 300 odd days left. You know, it's uh, uh, there's not that quite sense of urgency, but it's something that's a nice goal to have, and uh, it'd be nice to. Uh, uh, know what Lego's opinion is and see if it's something that's feasible for them to do. And uh, I think it'd be fun. A lot of uh, uh, adults have of uh, nostalgia and fond memories of the Flintstones, and, and uh, yeah, yeah, it'd be cool to see an official set. For sure, yeah. So help help it reach the 10,000 votes before the end of the month here, and you'll get in the next review period. That'd be awesome. This is this has been great. I really appreciate you yeah, chatting with me you. here. Thanks for bringing the builds out and everything. Thank you. And, Thanks for coming to Philly Brick Fest because there's all sorts of cool stuff here. I'm sure you've had a chance to, to interact with the public a lot and get their their reaction. Do do a lot of people recognize the source material? Oh, and everything. Definitely, definitely. The first thing they ask me is, why is there no faces? Oh right. Why is there no faces? Well, the answer is, um, I found it easier to do them digitally on top of the photographs than um, do it in the actual physical model. I hadn't actually put them on the mini figs before, and when I did try the the results looked a little bit shaky. <laughs> so I thought I'll just use my uh, Photoshop skills and uh, put them on digitally. So, uh, but yeah, the the fan reaction has been great, and uh, yeah, they really like that it has a nice interior and uh, detailed and full of character. And uh, but I'm sure Lego themselves, if they do choose it, will uh, think of something extra cool that I hadn't. Right. So, you know, all sorts of the talented designers there. Yeah, yeah, they've got whole teams like <laughs> brainstorming and like how can we make this cooler. 
Yeah. Good stuff. Well, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. So I thank think you. we got the, some, some more builders ready here. So I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Get all those builds packed up. And once again, thanks to everyone joining us in the chat here. Everyone, everyone watching. Some uh, love, love, love for the Flintstones in the chat. the question are we going to be at Brickford, virginia next year and we, we will be actually so uh this this year this year we'll be there it's always a fun show so we try to make it around as many shows as possible and, and cover somebody asked what's your favorite build so far uh there's a lot of cool stuff here the the, the giant minecraft layout is pretty awesome so i think that's one of my favorites looks like we've got a number of builders joining us so yeah i'll scoot down and we'll try to all stay in in the frame here. Yeah. Well, well, tapped. <laughs> Good stuff, guys. <laughs> Let's hope the chair doesn't break this time. I don't know how that's looking, John. Oh. Behind the camera there. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I just lost the camera. <laughs> Got a little this? shaky cam for you there. <laughs> Get behind the camera. No, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for that. Oh, yeah, there, there, there it is. Watch it on the chat. Got a little uh, action there. Okay. So, yeah. Thank, thanks for joining us. If you guys want to go down the line here and introduce yourselves and then talk about the builds you've got. All right. I guess I'll go first. I, My name is Oscar Flynn, and I run Oceanburg Fire on Instagram. And today I brought Morningside Squad 27, which fire truck. Can't tell. And it's a labor of love, I'll put it that way. I used some snot techniques on it that probably most people view as illegal. <laughs> hey, well, just you know, illegal. It, whatever works, yeah. it, it makes a cool design. Illegal snot technique, and then uh, for the purists, I use a little glue, so you're welcome. Glue, that should be illegal. Yeah, glue, that's what glue. And okay. then uh, I brought Mizpah engine 1822. It's another fire engine, except this time it's glue. So, adding to the uniqueness of it all. So, are these all based on real engines then, or? Uh, yes, actually. Okay. This one's in Maryland. This one's in New Jersey. Okay. So you're kind of looking at photographs of the engines as you as you as you're working on the build. Yeah. Okay. Very neat. What? One of the harder techniques, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So then we'll keep moving down the line. You can yeah. make sure to speak up here so everybody can right. hear you on the live stream. Uh, my name's Dylan. I run uh, Brick Ridge Fire and all the other associated fire departments with it that you see on my Instagram. Um, I brought my original fire engine. It's now engine 821, the original engine 26. This fire truck here was the first one I actually got started building publicly. And I guess it's whole started the whole custom fire trucks for me. There you go. Because you guys have a, a massive layout over there. This is just yeah, a small a, bit. a small portion <laughs> of what they have over there. It's crazy. I mean, so, so you guys how long have you how many years have you guys been doing this together? Uh, this is our first this time together. Career. Oh really? Okay. So, yeah. so it's just kind of all your separate builds you brought together yeah. and looked yeah. at. kind of I started last January. Um these guys much longer than I have. <laughs> A little bit. Nice. A little bit. So. Uh, I, only, I only a few years. Yeah, a few, <laughs> you got, you got a few years on me. Yeah. So. Okay. Then, this is a good segue because this year is half built by me, half built by him. <laughs> I bought it off of him because I'm like, hey, that's my color, so why not? It worked out. Yeah, it did. It worked out a long time. Oh. So, so I'm Rich Parts. I'm the chief of the Lego Township Fire Department and I'm the Owner and operator of Fierce Fire Apparatus and build and sell custom Lego fire trucks. I uh, brought with me uh, uh, engine 27, 23, squad engine that's lifted, goes out in the woods, goes on the beach, goes about everywhere. And then uh, this is Mock City uh, engine 7711, top mounted Pierce Velocity, and then um, black over line. The purple stripe, a very unique color scheme for the Lego Township. <laughs> yes, yeah, so some great colors here. So, so yeah. do you guys uh, work in, in in real life in fire fire departments? Is it does this come yes. from yes. that experience? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, yes. that's what yeah. I figured. 
Yeah. This all kind of comes out of your, your real life experience. With yeah, your jobs yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, like my couple of my fire trucks, I've actually had are based off of real fire trucks that I've worked on. Okay, so, that's that's great. It's, so, is it just the fire trucks then? Do you build other vehicles, other maybe town related stuff? Or? Mainly, I mainly do fire, but I'll expand into like Department of Public Works when okay. I like, need stuff. But other than that, just fire. I just do mostly, mostly fire. custom fire stuff, and then. But I do, I do just about anything now. <laughs> Some and of everything, yeah. If somebody's paying, I'll probably do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm real big into the Lego City sense. So okay. That's how would I do? So if you discuss any plans, maybe like a collaborative layout with all of you guys, can you combine you know, all of your all of your vehicles in a big city layout type of thing, or <laughs> uh, we'll keep that. Uh... Well, it's it's probably in the back of all of our minds at some point. <laughs> But I think the cost is more upfront compared to that. Sure. Yeah. 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 Well, good stuff. This is this is really neat. What do you find? I guess to dive more into the build a little bit. What do you find are the biggest challenges in building kind of real life vehicles? And obviously, you've got to get the parts right and everything. What are some of the challenges there? I'll direct you to the officer side of any truck ever. <laughs> nobody, nobody has the pump panel or the tail lights, and when they do, it's like the worst. It's like the most obscure picture ever. Oh, very right. true. Interesting. So it's, it's hard to find the source material. Then. Yeah. yeah. And every department, or almost every department, has everything in a different place. Like the lights set up and the where the intake and outtake is. It's so hard. Yeah. There's no such thing as a uniform fire truck. No, not at all. <laughs> Even in big cities where you think they're all the same. Nope. Well, That's really interesting. I didn't realize yeah. that. Does that come? What 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 is the reason for that? Would you say is that kind of the, the Depart- uniformity of, of all of that? If a department's getting a custom truck because they have big money, or they want one for their area, like obviously this one's different from this one because it's just what the department wants okay. and it's what they need for their area, so they spec it out to what they can. Sure. Yeah. Fun. Interesting, but then yeah, you got to capture all those little details in your in your builds and everything. Yeah. yeah. Now, is this the typical size of, of your your fire builds? Do you do some of the, the like bigger trucks, bigger builds, or do you stay at the scale? Six. Uh, anyway, I'll run back. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa! Can we ask about Thomas? <laughs> yeah. Most of our stuff's pretty much six wide. But okay. Six wide cars. We pick up usually about five wide. Yeah. Uh, and you can find a good five wide. Yeah, we vary four to five to six wide. But and that's the, the stud width that you yeah, find as well with, with typical Lego pieces. You can yeah. With the the windshields and stuff. But yeah. the uh, length will vary between the different trucks because the ladder trucks gonna be longer than a engine and. That's just how it goes. One of us should have brought a lighter truck. Just shut up. I think that's what he's going to go grab. I think, yeah, maybe just grab it. <laughs> so, yeah. what, what do the other the other people you work with at the, the fire departments think of these builds? Are they, are they cool. fans of that? Yeah. Yeah. They all want them. They all want them. They all want them. They all want them. all You do commission great. fire builds? <laughs> I will. I do. I, I'll do any fire department. Got to find the right size. There you go. Nice, yeah. Well, that's that's very impressive, and I do love that the the non traditional color ones are interesting as well. That's always you know, well, very. So you're seeing more more colors like that pop up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a very it's a very popular color in the Lego Fire community. Now. <laughs> yeah. It's also probably one of the cheaper ones is that slime line because nobody no, really builds with it. Build with it. It's a, it is a kind of a strange color. You can't do a lot with it. Yeah. There's, there's two shades of it. There's, there's, I guess, the more faded one and then the more the brighter slimy one. one. The, the brighter and the darker. Yep. He's got well, here we go. Okay. Oh, good. We want to talk about size. Size matters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fun. It's probably the largest out of all of ours, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah probably. So, does this have some playability to it? Functions and stuff you can. Let's hope it doesn't break this time. <laughs> Ladder raises and it turns. That's why. I Great, yeah. yeah. So that's all it does. <laughs> that's very cool. But yeah, so this went for the larger build, obviously. Yeah. What, yeah. Was it difficult coming at this larger scale and capturing some of that? Yeah. The more difficult part is where you attach it. Because if you can tell, all it's holding it in is this 2 by 3 uh, I think it's 35, 45 degree slope. So that's all it's holding it on. So that's probably the most difficult part. <laughs> 
I use those technic pieces. All right, well, that's you. Of course. It's different, so. Very, very cool, yeah. Well, this is some great builds here. I appreciate you guys bringing them over no and problem. showing them off to us. So, yeah, it's been really great chatting with you. No Thank problem. you. Yeah, enjoy the cool. rest of the show. So, Will do. Okay. All right, let's try not break <laughs> Yeah, try not to break yeah. on the way back. <laughs> we'll have to come back. So, okay, thanks. Hello, sit back there. We're going to talk about the Shot Todd. Shot Todd. Classic plastic bricks is back. Classic plastic bricks. <laughs> <laughs> Producer John, how's it going? We have more people here. <laughs> we'll move back in. Okay, hey, it's good to see you. Oh, good yes. to see you again, man. So I mentioned now a few times throughout the live stream about the, the record-breaking walking up Lego attempt that, that happened here. So this is the man, the myth, the legend right here. We got Brainy Bricks. <laughs> his feet are actually bandaged. You can't see them right now. But yeah, his feet are actually bandaged from the walk. So, yeah. so talk us through that process. What was that like for you? So, um, I mean, today it was absolutely crazy. It was way more intense than I was even anticipating. So uh, I think the final total was 2,737 feet. So over half a mile, which are you kidding me? Like, <laughs> I, like, I don't even have words for it. So, But, um, you know, the whole process in general has been really, really interesting and insane. Um, we first started it out because uh, Ferry Bricks over in the UK had 2,000 Lego sets stolen from their delivery van. So to help raise money, we did the first one at 120 feet which now just pales in comparison. Right. It's, it's like, like nothing. <laughs> yeah, like 120 feet, really? That was just my intro this time. So, but uh, this time Chad and, you know, Brick Fest, they hooked it up and allowed us to do it. So excited and so proud. So so are you based in the, the Philly area or in this area? This is kind of the closest show to you then? Um, so actually, um, I'm down in uh, Virginia. So okay. they just had the Raleigh show a while ago. And unfortunately, um, I, I didn't make it due to work, but um, today is actually my birthday. So happy birthday. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So my uh, my wife, my amazing wife said, hey, why don't you go for your birthday? Which obviously was a great idea. <laughs> so, but this has been so amazing. And seeing all the amazing mocks, like every year, because I don't come, I watch y'all's feed to see what all the new mocks are. Okay. And to see them on screen is really cool, but to see them in person, it's right. like, whoa, <laughs> like this is grandeur to it. Yeah, no, that's that's why I always encourage people. You know, I'm, I'm I love that we were able to come to shows and cover it for people who can't make it. But if you can, anyone watching, if you can make it to a show, seeing this stuff in person, there's nothing like it. And yeah. getting to talk to the builders and everything, it's so cool. And catching all those little details and stuff, you know, we do our best to try to show all of that. But but in person is certainly the best way to view it. Yeah, and I found that the builders are so open to talking and to just like explaining their process and they're so friendly um it really is just a, an inviting environment that um uh, it's good for all ages man. Mm -hmm. so, so while you were doing the, the firewalk on the bricks did it get harder as it went along or did your feet almost get, get like a numbness to it at all or did so, it just get harder than <laughs> yeah you know i was anticipating maybe 15 minutes my feet would go numb um but it didn't wow. and there were certain spots on the track, track where there was a buildup of Lego, and I slowly began to know where those spots were, and that's where it hurt the worst because my feet would hit, and then it'd slide down a little more as you're stepping, and uh, it, it just it was intense all the way through. So we actually did 14 and one quarter because it was a square. So that one quarter, I was trying to go another lap. I just I couldn't yeah, make yeah, it. That was like, it. <laughs> that's it. I'm done. So. It was just too, too phenomenal. So, do you think there'll be uh, more people coming out to beat your record? Because you mentioned you did, you beat the record back in January, was it? And then some other people, Lego themselves, yeah. uh, some other people beat the record since then. So now you reclaimed it. Do you think there'll be more people coming out to try to do it? So, um, I, I definitely, you know, records are made to be broken. Right. So, uh, if anybody thinks that, I would be upset if they went for it. Not at all. More power to you. Um, but uh, I. Definitely check your mental stability before you try it because <laughs> it is insane. The pain was just so intense, and it. Uh, I if, if anybody can go over half a mile, they deserve the world record at that point. So, yeah. 
There you go. Yeah, yeah, that's that's so cool. So then outside of that, talk about Brainy Bricks and some of the other work you do. Obviously, this is kind of the big event for what you're doing in the show, but talk about what you do outside of that. So Brainy Bricks is actually uh, my daughter. She's four years old. She goes by Cutie Bricks. Uh, and we uh, do most of our stuff on Facebook. We're migrating over to YouTube and Instagram. We do set reviews and standard things like that, but we have a lot of fun. And we just started doing a few different series where my daughter's in control. And a four-year-old in control of a show, uh, twists and turns happen at all points. Uh, but the real thing that we're all about is spreading you know, the love of Lego and the joy of just the creative process. So I really kind of try to showcase that with my daughter. And we do a ton of giveaways. Like everything that's sent to me, I send back out times two. And we have some very loyal fans in what we call the Brainy Brick Nation. And uh, BrainyBrickNation.com, you can check out our stuff. Yeah. Thank you. And um, but they actually send me stuff to do giveaways with all the time. So actually, right now we're giving away a 60th anniversary set, um, which is such a cool set. I'm sure you guys, you guys just did a Lego tour, right? If I saw. Uh, yeah, 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 we did. Like. I can only imagine how amazing that yeah. was. The archive and everything this was amazing. That's uh, that's was incredible. Yeah. I, do you mind if I ask you a couple sure. questions? Yeah, sure. Did <laughs> did the archive have like a smell to it? Like, did it have like a distinct smell with it being so um, pure? Nothing that stood out. So this this archive, they, they let people it's interesting. They have multiple archives, and this one's interesting because it's like a working archive. So designers go down there, and they let you know like media and people like that go down there wow. and, and really that's why you're allowed to touch all the sets and pick them up and handle them and stuff and everything like that you know we, we got comments on the video like why are you touching those old sets and everything I, 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 don't, I guess we didn't make it clear enough that you're allowed you're allowed to do that here. Yeah. Like, this is the point of that archive is to come through and like pick them up and everything so awesome. so yeah it was it was really great just being able to work through like decade by decade from like the 50s to today and see how the progression of the sets and everything. Yeah. They have like a curator down there that kind of takes care of it all. And so we were able to talk with her and she kind of took us through and explained how it works and stuff. That's so amazing. <laughs> I, um, for those of you who don't know, BrickFest has, for designers and builders uh, and displayers, they have essentially uh, stuff outside of the normal festival that everybody's invited to. And they did an auction last night. And one of the items was from Billing. It was from the Lego house. Okay. It was a cup with the leg, a Lego cup with the Lego house Lego on it. So uh, I ended up bidding quite a bit of money for it because it was all for charity, uh, and it was just so spectacular. But um, but yeah, this this has been so good, and I love watching y'all's videos. So Thank I you. I appreciate it. that. Yeah, it was it was great seeing you break the world record and everything, and you're powered through. That yeah, was man. awesome. Good yeah. stuff. Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah thank great you, chatting man. with you. Thank I you hope you guys all have an amazing time. Check us out on Facebook. As always, there you go. Play well. <laughs> so yeah, and we'll we'll have a more in-depth video with that as well. Watch it stagger off the stage here. <laughs> Stay Still safe. Like <laughs> we'll have a more in-depth video as as he was breaking the record and everything as well. So definitely keep an eye out for that. And it looks like John. Do we have some more people yeah. coming? Hey, hey, hey. Flash the flash. Handle. Okay. Okay. <laughs> on the on the job. <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely get that ad revenue set your way soon. <laughs> so yeah, we got some more people coming up. Somebody, uh, President Saad, shout out in the chat and asked, how are you doing today? You know, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm doing well. Uh, obviously, whenever I'm at a Lego show, it's an amazing experience and you get to meet so many people. One of the things I love the most about it is we, we get to meet the fans of Beyond the Brick in person. And so it's, it's really great because you know, we put out so many videos every year, but we're just kind of putting those out online when we can actually go and meet people in person. It's really awesome and take photos and everything. So uh, that is something I always try to mention. If you ever see us at a show, feel free to, to come up and say hi and take a photo, whatever you want to do. Uh, happy to sign some autographs, whatever you want. If you see us at a show, don't hesitate to stop because... We love meeting fans in person at the shows we go to, so it's always a fun experience, and, and I'm doing really well. Then somebody, GT Animations asks, do you own many LEGO sets? So I do own a number of sets. I've actually had to come back in recent years because I have too many and uh, running out of space, which I think a lot of LEGO builders can identify with. but. Uh, I, I do my best to, to 
get some new sets occasionally, do some cool stuff like the uh, the Ninjago City set is the most recent big build I've done. That was an incredible build. There's so much cool stuff in the Ninjago City. If you haven't had a ch chance to check out that set, I'd highly recommend it because it is it's very cool. Let's see if there's anything else in the chat I've got pulled up. So, uh, John, how many uh, our two producers back here? How, how many viewers have we had on the live stream throughout that? Okay, there are thirty or forty viewers throughout the live stream. That's cool. Somebody asks, uh, "Are you at shows in California?" So we will be out. Uh, let's see what all shows. We'll be at Bricks by the Bay uh, in California this year, and then actually. So that's in San Francisco. Then the weekend after that is Comic-Con San Diego. And so we'll be going to both those shows. So yeah, if there's fans out in California, you can find us either at Brits by the Bay or at uh, Comic-Con San Diego. Uh, we'll, we'll be out there and covering all of that stuff for you guys. Somebody asked about Clone Army Customs. I'm trying. Is there a Clone Army Customs uh, booth here? I've I've not seen Clone Army Customs here. Uh, we'll keep an eye out though. But there are there are a lot of vendors throughout here, so I, I might have missed them. But I, I don't remember seeing any so far. Yeah. So yeah, we've got some more builders coming for you. I don't know how much how much longer exactly we'll go, but we've got some we've got some good builders coming up here on the live stream. And then obviously in addition to this, this is kind of our live coverage, which is a fun thing we can do here at Philly because they have the stage and everything. They set this all up, so that's really great. And it's, it's a fun experience that isn't really available for us at other shows. Uh, but we're able to do this here, and so it's a lot of fun. Looks like our next builders joined us. Thank you very much, on, sir. Man? Do you want to introduce yourself to the viewers and Let's talk about what that. you've got? What's going on, guys? BX Bricks um, from Bronx, New York. Um, you might have seen me last year when they did uh, the coverage on the 100 Transformers. So, That's um, right. I got a couple of new models here. Got a Cyclonus. He's one of the bad guys. My favorite color purple right there. And then I have another guy who's part of a combiner. This guy's name is Hunger. His toy is going to be coming out pretty soon, so you might want to watch out for this also. There you go. So you can show some of the how they transform and everything, and kind of talk, take us through some of the techniques you use to build those. Well, so um, I use mostly the mixer ball joints, which you could get at any uh, Lego store pick a brick wall. So I try to make it you know easy for everybody. But um, this guy right here to transform them, I'm gonna flip down the little pieces of the wings right here. I'm holding up behind it. Flip out the legs. Flip the little feet out. The hill spurs. And then you take the cockpit area, fold it back. And there you have Cyclonus. <laughs> Perfect. That's amazing. And these are these builds are really impressive to me just because you know you've got you work within the restraints of Lego, which is already difficult, but then you're also having to transform from one model into another. So you've got no that added, added complexity there. Of so course. what is that process generally like for you? Is there a lot of experimenting so that it'll kind of be able to transform properly from into the different models? Well, I do a lot of the designing in uh, Lego Digital Designer. Okay. And what I'll do for a figure like this, I will design the robot mode and the vehicle mode simultaneously to make sure that each part is working until so both are correct, and then I, I brick it up. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So That's then cool. you got the the other guy over here. All right, this guy right here is Hungar. He's the chest component for a combiner. So four other guys connect to this guy to make one giant robot. So I'll probably put the video up for this but sometime after the convention. But he turns into a two-headed dragon. Wow. So to get this guy going. These will be his back legs. And then, um, what do we do next? You got how it all comes in here? Yeah, right? <laughs> Let's flip out the, this is gonna be the front legs. We're gonna open up this little panel right here. And then flip his head to the back, close that up. And the tail becomes his chest. So we take all of that, rotate it, and pull that to the back. Flip the legs around, and then these will easily become 
The double header dragon cuts right there. Wow. I love that. That's so cool. I, just watching you kind of transform it here, how that comes together is so cool. Thanks. <laughs> So like you mentioned, I think when you sat down, you've got how many of these now? It's um, This year I have 102 of them. <laughs> so I have four combiners and um, two pyramids, each holding about 40 characters each. Okay. That's that's incredible. Yeah, that's that's so amazing. Well, thanks thanks for bringing those over. That's thanks, very man. impressive. I really me, appreciate man. it. Yeah. yeah for thanks for coming out to the show and bringing All your right. stuff. See you guys next. Yeah. Time. I think watch the – don't want to leave a piece behind there. <laughs> Okay, so I think we've got some more some more builders lined up. Get everybody in here. Take a look at the chat real quick. Uh, question about Brickworld Chicago real quick. Yes, we will be at Brickworld Chicago. So look forward to coverage from there as well. And here's our next builder. So if you both want to introduce yourselves and, and tell us what you got here. Hi, I'm Cheryl Cameron. And I'm Quinn Cameron. This is my son. This is my first ever attempt at a mosaic. Okay. And I'm a huge Eagles fan. We are in Philadelphia. So Amen. That Woo! <laughs> and I've been waiting my entire life for them to win the Super Bowl. <laughs> they made it back in the 80s, but they, they lost. So finally, a year to remember. <laughs> I figured let's commemorate it. So we poked it into a, a little program, and we got the picture, and then we went with that. So I, I had a little bit of a glitch because the color that I wanted here was actually the light bluish gray. But unfortunately, it didn't come in time. And apparently, the Lego stores can't order them anymore. Okay. So we went off the board and we went with the, uh, what's, what's the official name of it? Sand green. Sand green. Sand green. Which kind of goes with the color, so it worked. So and you mentioned you use like a, a, is it a computer program or how did that work exactly? Yeah, he's, he's, he's like a website. Like okay, so it's a website you kind of plug, yeah. plug that in and it'll kind right. of translate it into the mosaic type image. Yes. And does that then yeah. give you the colors to use or do you decide which? Well, it gave me, I guess it didn't tell me the exact colors, but you could see the what the idea. colors okay. were. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's what we went with. So it was pretty fun. I yeah. think I'll do it again, <laughs> uh, a different, uh, picture obviously next year sure so uh, we'll go with that again how did you decide to use it looks like it's mostly one by one yeah and, and like that size of piece i know some yeah. mosaics people will just use like plate size pieces did you mess around with, with what no i just went with well i actually started as you can see on the side here i kind of fudged it you know i had these extra pieces yeah. uh yeah and then here i didn't realize it was on the end oops uh, there you go. So yeah, you can yeah, see how right you, in there. You uh, yeah, kind of kind of fudged it at first, and then improvised. figured yeah, and I used pieces that I already had. So then I decided, well, you know what? Let's just go with the one by one, and uh, that's what happened. Perfect. That works well. Great learning experience as always when you do anything. Mm -hmm. So. So have you done other types of builds outside of mosaics? Or was this kind of your first build? Well, I have actually the Miss Lego pageant over there and we have a little runway where our girl is moving and we have all of the contestants i even have a booklet lists uh, of course it's, none of it's real but it lists their name and their platform and things like that but then i also have interesting information about each state okay so we have that and then my daughter has a little friend set a daycare for the pets and she has a Mission Diamond, I think it is, where these guys are trying to steal the diamond. And then the funniest thing she made was a little sofa out of pink and blue bricks. And she titled it, It Doesn't Matter What It Looks Like. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, that's the beauty of Lego. You can do that kind it's of stuff. It's a happy accident, right? <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's been a lot of fun. Neat. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you bringing it over here. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> where are you from? Well, I'm originally from Springfield, PA, which is around here, but then uh, moved out to Snow Country. We live in between Erie and Pittsburgh, and we're right okay. on the Ohio border. So okay. we're all the way on the other end of the state. We're actually in Steeler Country. <laughs> but yeah, I know you're a Ravens fan, but it's okay because the Steelers are AFC and the Eagles are NFC. 
I was really worried back in like 05 when it could have been a Steelers Eagles Super Bowl and I would have had to come back home to watch. <laughs> yeah, so that's where, that's where so, we are from. So. What did you think of Discovery Center when we went out there Thursday? It was cool. That's yeah, the first the time I've ever been there. were at the Discovery Center, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> it was I remember amazing. the show doing that. That's really was, neat. Yeah, it was really cool. The fact that we had the whole place to ourselves. Okay. There are no real little kids running around. And, oh, we had a, I had a blast at the class. I'm, re I'm really terrible at building this stuff. I can't see it, you know? The, the class was funny. Yeah, you all sit around, and the guy in the center has a camera on him from the ceiling. And so he's working his magic. And you've got a screen over here and a screen over here. And you can watch him live at the same time. And so the one guy, Seth, I believe it was, on the end of yes. our row, he's yelling, you're going too slow. And I'm like, no, you're going too fast. And like I put, I put a couple pieces in and I yelled bingo. Because that's, uh, you know, I right. can play bingo, but I, I got almost to the end in the last couple pieces. And this I didn't was know like what a to arts do. building technique it was type like, of class? It or? was like the pet of the month or the okay. build of the month. Okay. And I think it was a sheep, right? Yes. Supposedly. Yeah, and then we had to build something of our own. Mine was hideous. <laughs> You know, start you know, somewhere, hey, yeah. My my nine year old did something way better than I did. So you know, kids, but it was kids have a way of doing that. Yeah, they'll yes. show us up. Oh, and they, they laugh, of course, with me and my phone, and then the computer. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, thank <laughs> you. What was more fun, the, the Discovery Center or the ride over with our friends oh. and drivers? <laughs> There is a fun oh, ride over. Look what's coming. We have, do we have oh, an additional? Bring it. Uh, don't bring worry. Bring it the my... EP is handling. Okay, thank you. Now, wait, but you have to guess what this guy's is name is. For time. What do you think his name is? No clue. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for bringing that over. Are you from the Discovery Center? Yeah. I'm the okay. Oh, he, great. Awesome. He truly is a master builder. Okay. Oh, my goodness. The polar bear that he made over oh, there. Oh, and he said it. It's, he just looks at a picture. Yeah, took three hours. That's incredible. There you go. Awesome. So then oh were you goodness. there during the opening ceremonies then? They, yes. they had, okay. I helped build the entire site. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Very oh, cool. Did, did you build fantastic. this as well? Yeah, I did. right after the Super Bowl, it took about three days to build. Uh -huh. Okay. Very cool. That, that's awesome. Yay! <laughs> See, awesome, here we boy. go. If you, if you want to sit down then and maybe chat about the, the yeah. techniques and stuff and kind of your, if you have time. Yeah, we'll switch. I've got very little time right now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right, thank, you. thank you. Would you like this right here? Yes. Awesome. That works. Let's keep it in Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank Great meeting you, here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can just take that or sit right yeah. here. That works yeah. as well. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, if you just real quick want to introduce yourself to, to the viewers and talk about what you do and then talk about the build. Yeah, I'm Mike, the Master Model Builder for Legoland Discovery Center, Philadelphia. Uh, right after the Super Bowl, I was tasked with making our site Super Bowl worthy. So we made the uh, the, the logo, the parade, um, flip over cars, and all of that. <laughs> all of those the yeah, classic the good Philadelphia things, the good things. <laughs> um, and then the trophy, which took about three days to make. Okay, so talk about some of the techniques in here, because obviously you've got the football shape, which is not kind of a traditional Lego shape, so you've got to do some interesting stuff there. And then also the angles you got here, so how did that yeah. come together? So the football itself, we have a computer-generated model that helps us out uh, to make those intricate shapes. Um, and it's just layering on top of a parade. So it's uh, layer by layer, it tells us how to make it. Uh, so that part is pretty easy. The bottom, I had to figure out myself. Um, to make it a smooth angle on each side. Okay. So it's trickery, trickery <laughs> inside. That's all I can explain. And then uh, we have to glue the whole thing. I have a bolt going through it. That way it holds mm -hmm. for photo ops. Right, okay. And I think that's important with a lot of the like, Legoland type models, Discovery Center, Legoland parts, and everything that's stuff is generally glued just to keep it safer and everything. You yes. want something falling on a kid or something like that. Exactly. Okay, good stuff. Well, yeah, thanks Thanks for bringing this over then. And All right. I, I'm glad you were able to get involved with the, the Philly show here and everything. Yep. All right. Yeah, this is the second year here. So I, I got to say something. We hung out there at Discovery Center, and he answered every question everyone had. There you go. Very patient. <laughs> I could do. Big surprise there. <laughs>
Good stuff. Well, it was great meeting you, Mike. Yeah, Thank you so much. It. Yeah, enjoy the rest of the show. All right. You guys have a great day. You too. All right. So I got to have the extra. Thanks, <laughs> Do we have a returning? <laughs> yes, yes. Come on. We, I got to talk about something. He doesn't know. Just sit down. Okay. It's all good. Just, just sit down. <laughs> Guys, I got a text message that some of you guys missed me. Back. <laughs> All right, so you guys were at, were at Rick Bear, right? Yes. You see this display? Yes, yeah. What, what do you think? Yeah, I like it. You got all of them laid out there, like 100 of them or whatever. I think it's cool stuff. Impressive? Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, who won? You, you, should, you should sit over here and sit down. You both into the table for the fight. How's that? We're all friends here. Uh, I don't know about that. We, we, we're going to talk about it behind your back later. Okay, that's, I, I expect that. All right, so I guess, I don't know if you heard, so you saw his display at Brick Fair, right? Yes. So what, 100-ish? 100. All right. You flat. I looked at it, I was like, whoa! I was impressed. He didn't win a Brickie. Did some kid, I mean, no offense to whoever did it, but uh, I wasn't impressed. This is... My man went <laughs> overboard, spent all the time, they transform, they're not just sitting right. there. See, well, see, I think the problem might be is like if you don't take the time to like see him transform them, then maybe they aren't as impressive because they're just sitting there. And, but once you see them transform, then they're you like, well, that's really cool, and then they're more impressive. So, so, well, so judge come by, ask to see him, ask to hold him, ask to see a display, come on, Al. Yeah, yeah. To some degree. Everything Lego was just sitting there. <laughs> no, I know. I, I agree. I agree. But I think what really makes your model stand apart is like when you transform them. That to me is like the wow factor oh, yeah, and everything. Yeah. All right. So I haven't seen any other builder do what he did. I have not. No. So I, so, yeah, I would have given it. I don't, I, I'm not involved in that process, so I don't know what to say. I, I, I think. Stand a little bit. <laughs> now I know I set you up, so I, I wasn't gonna tell you. If, if I told him what I was gonna do, he wouldn't have come up. Ooh, no, I'm not. I'm not Oh, all right. Just, Know. But I think at the end of the day, it's important to remember that, I, like, displaying it shows isn't about the awards. I mean, it's cool to win them, but I think it's if you have fun and you enjoy it and everything. So uh, I think at the end of the day, it's all about just enjoying the displays and everything and interacting with the public and having fun. So I agree. But if you're going to give awards, let's give awards to something decent. Man. That is true. Yeah. Okay? I mean, but if, you're, if you're if you're giving awards, I mean, let's let's be, let's keep it real. But you do great work, so stick with it. I'm sure. I'm sure you'll you'll be recognized with some awards in the future. I definitely appreciate it. I'm All right, now I gotta go around and find some more guests. You know, since you guys can't handle that. That's true. I don't know what we're gonna do. We, we probably have to stop it somewhere. We gotta do our, our short show interviews as well. So, <laughs> so, so you're done with me? Oh, uh, we might be. I mean, oh. it's, it's, that pains me to say it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for having me again yeah, for no, a second time today. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys later. Stick with it. Yeah. All right. So I think uh, we might, we lost John, but I, I think we might wrap this wrap this up for a bit here. Um, we'll see if, in, unless John finds someone very pressing we need to chat John's with because <laughs> we, we want to make sure we have time to go around and do the, the convention floor interviews as well, the more in-depth interviews along with the oh, live stream here. So <laughs> I think we will wrap up here. Let's see. I want to make sure we have everything. I lost the I lost the chat here. Let me see if I can pull. Let me see if I can pull up the stream and find the find the chat. One second here. Okay. Uh, here it is. Any questions? If anyone has any other questions before we wrap up here in a few minutes, feel free to to ask away. We really appreciate all of the, the support here that everyone has given us. Lots of great public, all the viewers. We'll wait for wait for John to get back here. I, th I think I think we'll wrap up here. I don't know where where John went off to, so we'll uh, I'll probably shut off the live stream here. So thanks everyone for watching and. We will see you soon. We might live stream again during the show, but if not, it was it was great having you join us. Thank you.